Hello, 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 and welcome uh, to the uh, Ball and All podcast. This is the Basketball Africa League Daily Recap. It is day five. We've been doing this for five days. Really great initiative uh, started by uh, NBA Africa in conjunction with FIBA. Uh, the best 12 teams in the continent just going at it. And uh, it, it's becoming closer and closer. We're getting some really good games, some really close games. And so we'll be going through those games today. Normally, um, on the uh, daily recap, um, we will be covering three games, but we're going to be covering two, so we're going to be talking about that. Just a quick reminder, my name is Mpo Mutwani. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mpo Mureki, so please do uh, follow me on uh, Twitter uh, as well, and also on Instagram. Um, the other important thing is, as I put the banner up, please like and subscribe uh, to the Ball and All uh, podcast YouTube channel. It is posted on YouTube every day, and we, we, we discuss the basketball that's happened. So big thing that's happened last yesterday, we found out that the match between GS Petroleus um, of Algeria again, uh, and Zamalek was postponed due to the league's health and safety protocol. Um, and so it will be played at a later date. So we're just trying to find out. There's not much coming out of that. Um, we're just trying to find out how long the protocol is and how will it affect the uh, final games, um, the games and the group games, because obviously you've got, um, you've you, this is the second round, essentially. Teams are playing their second games at this point in time. And the final round is on Saturday and Sunday. There's a rest day tomorrow. So um, I won't be on um, unless if they play it and then I will come on. Um, so that's going to be uh, something that needs to be watched out for. That's really important. But we're just here to discuss basketball, so let's get into it. Um, first game today, Petro de Luanda taking on um, FAP of Cameroon. Petro de Luanda, as we know, 14-time um, Angolan champions, African champions, FAP, the champions of Cameroon. They had to qualify um, through the qualification tournament in West Africa. I expected Petro de Luanda to kind of pull the game away. And to a certain extent in the first half, it felt like it was that when they ended the half with a 10-point lead. Um, and to a certain extent, in the it, it, it kind of felt that you kind of wanted FAP to come through and 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 to kind of step up their game. There were a few turnovers that they were having there that were, that were frustrating. Um, but the most important thing was that in that half, Antoine Scott of of Petro de Luanda had, was hitting uh, was 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 lighting it up at twelve points, four four out of four from three, uh, really really great performance from him. But then in the second half things changed. Uh, FA both teams are really good defensively, and that's what Petro de Luanda um, can put their hand on. That's their mark. They're very organized defensively, and then offensively they move the ball around quite easily and freely, um, and they get easy looks for their for their teammates around. But FAP really struggled on the offensive end, but they got better. Um, but the defense was always there and was always available um, and, and ready and working hard. Um, and, and that kind of carried them through the rest of the game as their offense got a lot better. Um, in the fourth quarter was just a two-man show between Amadou Huruna as well as uh, Marcus Thomas Jr. Marcus Thomas Jr. is the point guard of, of uh, FAP and Amadou Huruna is the shooting guard. It was just guard play all the, all the, all the way. They scored all but one of the points uh, for FAP in that third quarter. Um, FAP just went in. Uh, Haruna scoring, uh, he scored nine points and Marcus Thomas scoring seven. They brought the game down to a one point game. It was a, it was an 11 point, um, it was an 11 point turnaround for uh, FAP from between the third quarter, uh, between the, the, the start of the third quarter and the middle of the fourth. And then they started trading buckets with, with Petro de Luanda. Like I said yesterday, um, we're talking about um, uh, what team was it? Yesterday, it was a team from Mali um, who got very close um, and, and they just couldn't pull it away. Um, and and, and one, one of the reasons why they just couldn't do it was because of their, um, their, 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 their late game uh, decisions and today FAP will be very remiss about their late game decisions. Um, one of which was with about um, 
with about 24 seconds to go. The shot clock was turned off. Uh, Petro de Luanda, they were down by two. Petro de Luanda got the inbound of the ball underneath their basket. They moved over the half court. When they got over the half court, there were 18 seconds left. Um, Carlos Moresh, of, of, it, wasn't, it wasn't Moresh, it was the number five. Um, of Petro de Luanda loses the ball. They get the turnover, does FAP, um, and Haruna has the ball. They march down the other side of the court and then they lose it. The coach didn't decide to call a timeout. And so that happened. And then so Petro de Luanda gets the ball again and s- somehow um, they lose it again with about five seconds to go, but they only call a timeout, uh, does um, oh, no. So they do not foul. That was the problem. They did not foul. I kept on saying foul, 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 FAP, but they didn't want to foul. Petro de Luanda moved the ball for 12, for, for about 16 seconds, and they only fouled with about 2.6 seconds left. That leaves enough, that doesn't even enough time only for just one shot. Had they fouled earlier on, they could have been trading buckets all the way through and see who's who's the, who's the icier one at the free throw line. So that was really disappointing from FAP because you they had it in them. Uh, but for Petro de Luanda, they had 27 turnovers and they weren't punished. They were not punished. 27 turnovers is criminal and they were not punished. That just says a lot about this FAP team. They'll learn. Um, and you can see that they knew the other team was a little bit more stout. Petro de Luanda didn't come out that great. Um, and, and, and I'm starting to question whether my prediction of them being the favorites um, in terms of winning the entire thing is coming to through fruition. But we'll talk about another team that I think is probably going to win the, win it all. Um, but the good thing about Petro de Luanda's win today is that they qualified um, for the playoffs. So they are sorted for playing next week um, in the playoff round. Yeah, and so I just FAP can still make it, and I think they're a really good side. And the fact that they lost by two points will stand them in good stead if they're looking to be the third best uh, team. But the only problem is FAP need to win their their final game in order for them to um, to make it through. They lost their first game to S Sale, um, and then so now they're going to be looking. Uh, to find a way to make it in as a third best loser, having lost both games, so it's going to be a little bit tougher. But um, in Group A, uh, there are big scores being being put on teams in Group A, so uh, it could be blessings for them. Moving on to Group A, um, the girls, the second game today. Um, there is a final game uh, happening today, and we'll talk about that. U.S. Monastir take on River, took on Rivers Hoopers. Rivers Hoopers of Nigeria trying to get themselves back into the tournament, playing the tournament favorites. They're the first team to score 100, and today they got very close. It was 99 and 70. That's that was the final score, like 99 and 70. And U.S. Monastir picked up from the last game. They played incredibly well. Uh, we saw new players come to uh, come to the fore. Um, in um, number 15, the captain, uh, Radan uh, Slimani, he scored 23 points. He was six from nine from three. This team was really good from New York. Um, if you think about it, the points in the paint for both teams were the same, 36-36, right? And then also... Uh, the amount of, of shots that they took inside was similar. Um, uh, U.S. Monastir took 45 shots, hitting 22 at a, a rate of 48. And uh, Rivers Hoopers, 19 or 41 uh, at, a, at, a, at a percentage of, of, of 46. What was the difference? The massive difference was Monastir hit 15 threes, 15 of 31, that's 51%. And, and Rose Hooper's 6 of 23, 26%. They were taking some really rushed threes. They weren't taking their time, especially in the half court. Uh, they felt rushed. And that's to testament to Rivers Hoop, uh, to, to Monastir's defense. But if you think about Monastir, 27 assists. That's how good they are. They moved the ball around. Wael Arachne is, is, a, is a favorite of mine. He's growing to be a favorite of mine. He was just moving the ball around, shooting at will, just dictating and driving and, and making the defense do what he needed it to do so he could score. And that's one of the marks of a very good scorer is a man who can manipulate and shift the defense to, so he could he could make a way to score. Um, there's a really lovely uh, shooting guard in Alma Brook who is a really good shooter and quite exciting. And then the, uh, uh, and then Monastir has uh, Omar 
um, Abada, who's a he's who's who's a who's a who's a really good point guard. He came out of basketball without borders in 2011. Really, really great player. They just dominate every facet of the game. The 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 the, 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 the gap was so wide that at halftime it was 50 points to 22. But the great thing for Rivers Hoopers is that. Um, they scored 10 points in the first quarter, 12 in the second. Then they moved on to score 25 in the third and 21 in the fourth. They need to take that second half and try to replicate it for the rest of, of the tournament or the next game they have against GMBC if they could stand a chance. So for Rivers Hoopers, their only chance right now is if they uh, beat GNBC, um, but they beat them by a, 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 a sizable margin. Um, but I think if they beat GNBC, because they lost by 29 points, they would need to try and and cover some of that deficit that they have to try and get it down to single digits um, in order for them to be able to, to, to make it through as one of the best, uh, one of the two best third place finishes in this tournament. I think the two best third place finishes could come out of Group B and C because you're not seeing these big blowouts happening. Um, but... If for Rivers Hoopers to have a chance, they're going to have to try and put down GNBC, which is going to be quite interesting um, because I think GNBC um, is a very interesting matchup to w- with them uh, because they are a much better shooting side from three and they play small ball and, they, and they've been playing small ball uh, throughout the tournament. So that's going to be quite interesting to see. So those are the recaps of the two teams. Monastir with winning this game qualify for the playoffs. So we've got now three teams that have qualified um, for the playoffs. Two in Group A, being Patriots and Monastir. And in Group B, you've got Petro de Luanda, who has um, qualified. Um, so let's just go through um, the... Let's just go through the, um, the, the, the the fixtures, and then we'll talk about the group standings. Um, so... Uh, looking at the fixture list, um, the flip fixtures, uh, let me just uh, remove that. Um, the fixtures in blue are all the fixtures that have happened over the past five days um, with uh, two matches yet to be played. That Zamalek and Petrolia's game, that is going to be uh, that has been postponed and will be reallocated to another time, uh, probably over the weekend or even um, tomorrow because tomorrow is a rest day. And also the final game, which is AS Saleh versus AS Police. Um, that's going to be quite an interesting game. Be as Saleh looking to uh, qualify alongside Petro de Luanda, having beaten FA, FAP in the first game, beating FAP by three points. You can see how tight Group B is and its decisions. And it was interesting. I think um, GNBC yesterday, uh, FAP had the same uh, decisions that I'm complaining about. They were the same team with the same last minute decisions that uh, that really hurt them from winning games and they're going to have to try sort those out um, going forward. Um, the next game and uh, the next set of fixtures are the final round fixtures. These are where guys qualify for the playoffs as those lucky losers, or the lucky uh, higher seeded as third base play, third third placed teams. Or, or you call them lucky losers. I used to always call them lucky losers. And so those these uh, fixtures are happening over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Obviously, we'll let you know about that Petroleum and Zamalek game. Looking at the groups, um, you can see in Group A, um, the two teams that have qualified, Monastir and Patriots, they play each other on Saturdays. It's going to be quite interesting to see how the Patriots come up against this this juggernaut of a team that is Monastir, who are favourites, uh, to take it all. Um, and you obviously got uh, Rivers Hoopers and GNBC. Actually, Rivers Hoopers should be third, uh, just by one point difference there. Um, and so uh, that game between Rivers Hoopers and GNBC will be very important to see whether they can't just uh, decrease the difference. You can see the teams in Group A have a massive point difference, whereas the teams in the other in the other groups do not, especially the teams who have only just won one game or who have lost one game or lost both games. That's that's something you need to look at. So if in Group B, you can see Petro de Luanda. Um, they have um, they have obviously their four points. Uh, Saleh is playing as police tonight. Um, and so they will, po- if they win, they will qualify as well. And it's a straight shootout between FAP and AS Police for the final uh, matchup. So too, just like GNBC and Rivers Hoopers, but obviously they'll have an eye on the other groups. And then in Group C, you've got AS Duanes um, taking on, uh, AS Duanes leading the pack with Ferrari Vario. There's a Ferrari Vario. 
uh, of Maputa. I do apologize for that. Just a little bit of a tongue twister for me there. But obviously, with Zamalek having only played one of GS Petrolos, this group's still a long way away from being solidified. Um, yeah, so uh, that is the daily recap um, for you um, on the Basketball Africa League. There probably will not be one unless if um, the, there is a game with Zamalek and... Um, with Zamalek and GS Petrolis, and I'll do on tomorrow. The game with Air Saleh and Air Police, I'll probably do in the recap on Saturday uh, when I do all the all the games that are going to be happening on a Saturday, uh, which is those final group games. But thank you very much uh, for watching and listening on the podcast platforms. I am uh, this podcast is available on Apple Podcasts at the Ball and All Show, um, also on Anchor Podcasts as well if you're a podcast uh, person. Uh, but thank you very much for joining. Enjoy the basketball. Uh, tonight um and then and on saturday because the well, next time will be saturday evening when we when we uh, meet again um uh, for so from myself Mpomukwane, all the way from south africa enjoy the rest of the game as they say in basketball africa league game on and as they say in my native language